Happy fall, everybody. It's Florida, though, so it's still freaking hot. I decided to make myself an orange rock and blue wrap top and a plaid circle skirt. So stick around and I'll show you how I did it. So we've got all of our pieces cut out. Now you're gonna take the stay piece E, which is basically a guide on how wide to gather. So we are going to create some gathering stitches at the top of bust piece, and then we're gonna gather it down to fit here. <laughs> so now we are going to pull bobbin threads gently gather this fabric all right and now I'm gonna start from the other side I like to kind of go from both sides if I can just because I feel like it helps it to be a little bit more even And the thread broke. How rude. Dang, well, I guess I had to redo that. I also remembered that this needs to be at 3 8 inch, not 5 8 inch, because all the sides of the binding seam allowance is 3 8 of an inch, so don't forget about that. Oh my goodness, I don't know what is wrong with this fabric. Just does not want to gather. This is um, just a Kona cotton, quilting cotton. Don't really know what the problem is. Oh, it looks like maybe you're getting somewhere finally. And now, when you distribute your gathers, you're gonna want to make sure the middle of up here is in line with the middle point right here because if, if it's to the side your gathers are gonna lean weird. Now I'm gonna take my paper and I am going to redistribute these gathers to where the notches on my fabric are in line with the edge of the paper. I'm happy with that. That looks great. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just baste this because these gathers were kind of giving me trouble and I just wanna make sure they're secure. Okay, now we are going to take some bias binding and we are going to sew that up here. You can use like a contrast binding, that would be super cute, or you can use a matching one like I'm using. I'm just going to baste this first before I stitch it fully. You know, you really can't ever baste too much. It's just, it's a good habit to get into. That is looking really good. So, just going to check this out and make sure it looks good before I stitch it. Now, I'm going to fold this over. Actually, first I'm going to trim. Okay, now I'm going to fold this over. And I am going to top stitch this. You could definitely hand stitch this down. But since this is a cute, casual little top, I think. I like the look of top stitching, so I'm gonna do that. And when I top stitch, I like to do stitch length of three. That is the first piece done. It's looking so cute already. I cannot wait to keep going. Next up, I need to gather down here. You know what? I kind of want to do this by hand only because of the way the fabric was behaving before. Okay, so it's been a couple days and now I'm going to attach the bottom of the bodice to the bust piece. I gathered this by hand, as you can see, and I just took 
I took it over to my ironing board and I just steamed it to kind of lock in these gathering bit. I didn't overlock this. I'm actually going to pink it. And then you got to match up your notches. I don't usually pin a whole lot, but when I do gathers, I like to use an abundance of caution and pins because I'm trying to keep them really evenly spaced. I'm just going to sew this one half here and then when I get to the middle I'm going to clip down right here and then I'll pivot and then sew the rest because I have to match up a point with a dip and trying to force the fabric to match up would be really difficult, so I'm just going to do one side at a, at a time. Now I'm just going to clip right down there, smooth the fabric out. Now I'm going to pin this side in place. Okie dokie. So I am going to go press this now and then I'm going to do some top stitching. Okay, we're all pressed, so now I'm going to use my pinking shears and trim excess seam allowance. I'm not going to trim too close, but I just want to pink the edge to prevent fraying. You know, I've been finding myself gravitating more and more to pinking as a form of um, seam finishing. I used to kind of hate it. <laughs> now I find it to be very authentic looking. And plus I don't have to worry about what color thread I have in my serger. Not that I really worry too much about that in general anyway. <laughs> I like the way it looks and it doesn't add any bulk. The other thing that's nice about the pinking shears is that there's more control, I feel, than a serger. Sometimes, like this, for, for long straight lines, a serger is fantastic, but for any kind of curves and stuff, it can get a little tricky. And just the way that this is, I would have had to serge up here and then there, and I would have had a little extra. Now I am going to top stitch, just like I did up here. This is definitely not necessary. Like I said before, this kind of casual style, I really want to echo top stitching here too. And again, I'm going to change my stitch length to three. When I'm top stitching, I'm pulling apart a little bit, but not too much because you don't want it to be so, so spread apart. You're just wanting to keep the fabric enough to where there's not, you're not losing any of this length, but you don't want it to be stretched so far that you see the other stitches. Well, that <laughs> looks fabulous, I must say. Let's get a zoom in on here. Oh yeah. So now what we have to do is sew these side seams and we're gonna match up the notches and something I just want to mention because I don't know that I saw anything until I had been sewing for a little while about this but the reason why you match up notches is because you know if you're a new sewist you might think like oh my gosh it's not matched up I need to match up these edges here right you really are trying to match up the seam line which is five eighths of an inch from the edge usually so when you match up the notches, these two pieces cross right at 5 eighths of an inch and then they'll be lined up properly. Just a little note. With this, we also have to remember that we need to leave a space for the tie and it's on this side. On the front bodice piece, there's a little notch down here and it says to leave open two inches above that. So I actually am going to leave like two and a half inches because my waist is smaller, which means that this piece comes in farther 
tie comes in farther and it, it gets wider the closer it gets to the side. So if you have a smaller waist, maybe leave a little bit extra. Okay, so I left that slot open here. See that? I'm going to do the other side. Okay, now I'm going to go press this really quick. Press the seams open. And then I am going to top stitch this little opening right here. And we're done. That looks so nice. If I do so so myself. <laughs> Very clean. Okay, moving on to the ties, the bias binding. Everybody's favorite part. <laughs> oh God, when I tell you I made two full bias strips and then I realized somehow one of them was not on the bias. I don't know how. I managed to do that, but I cut it, I swear, I cut it on the bias and then sewed it in a way that like unbiased it. <laughs> it's talent. Anyway, <laughs> doesn't matter. So now, um, let me see where they, it says allow 20 inches for the tie at the top. You gotta have something to tie to. So. You're gonna have 20, 20 inches of excess at the top. 20 inches and uh, just a tiny bit more to finish it off. So there's this seam right here where I had to join the pieces. And I don't want that right up by my neckline, so I'm gonna see if the other side doesn't, doesn't have that and then I might use that instead. Yeah, this side's gonna be better. I'm gonna sew, I opened up the bias, right? And I've got, this is the right side of the bias here. This is the right side of my project here so that when I close it up, after I stitch that down, this will be on top and I'll be able to top stitch in place. Got it. Okay. So now this is actually three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And now just go to town and it's gonna take a minute. When you get to the end, I have altered the pattern to more resemble the illustration on the front of the package. So a very shallow W here. Do, 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 do. And then you will get, what do you know? A clean point. <laughs> Good news! You don't need a pattern to create a circle skirt, just a calculator, a pencil, and some scrap paper. Keep in mind, these instructions are only for a full circle skirt. If you want to make a half or quarter or three quarters, you'll have to do different calculations. There are tons of free online circle skirt calculators out there if you are so inclined. First, you'll need your waist measurement. Mine is 26 and a half, but I'm adding an inch of ease. So we're going to divide that by 6.28, which is two times pi, which gives us a total of 4.38 inches. Fold your fabric in half, then rotate and fold again. The 4.38 inch measurement will begin from the corner. Next, we need to add the skirt length measurement. I decided on 25 inches from my waist, plus one inch for the hem. If we add the 4.38 inches from earlier, we will get a total of 30.38 inches. That's how long our folded edge needs to be. Now that will not fit on 58 inch fabric as that folded in half is only 
28 inches. If we're making a shorter skirt, it could be fine, but I want more of a midi length. So what can we do? Instead of cutting one piece of fabric, we'll cut two half donut shapes on fabric folded once, like so. Then we'll sew them up at the side seams. The waistband is simply one long rectangle. Your waist measurement plus three inches for seam allowance and overlap. So here I'm measuring out my 4.38 inches, but rather than just marking right there, I'm actually gonna go back over by half an inch to account for my seam allowance. So I should also mention that I am measuring from the corner of the selvage there. I'm gonna use the selvage as seam allowance. So I just used my measuring tape, and sorry, that's out of focus and went around in kind of a circle shape every probably half inch to an inch or so. And I connected the lines to make a semicircle. I repeated the procedure for the length of the skirt, measuring out 31 inches. I did end up leaving a little bit extra than I originally calculated for the length. So I did probably about 27 inches instead of 26 inches. And then I cut that out. Oh, bad news. <laughs> I should have matched up the pattern before I cut the second piece. That was my mistake. So what I've done is shifted one piece to where now the plaids match up. And what I'm going to do is shave off this bit right here and this bit and make sort of a more oval shape in the center. And then I'm going to take in the side seams by that much to make up for adding extra space in the circle. So hopefully that's going to work out. That's 27. That looks about five-eighths inch seam allowed, so I'm gonna call that good. All right, crisis averted. Luckily, I did cut it a little bit longer, so I should be okay. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, skirt time. So I am going to start by sewing the side seams. Well, one side seam. So one of the side seams is going to be, it's gonna have the zipper. So if I remember correctly, I need to sew with like an inch of seam allowance to account for my pattern matching blunder. So I'm really just gonna only sew one side. You know, the nice thing about this side seam is that since, I, since I'm using the selvage, I don't actually have to finish the seam off. And we're done. Now I have to insert the zipper. So I'm going to do a lapped zipper and I'm going to actually baste the top part of this where I want the zipper to be and then sew the rest of the seam down from there. And now I shorten my stitch lengths and sew the rest of the side seam from there. Okay, now I need to get with my zipper stash and look for a brown zipper. I don't know if I have one, but let's check. <laughs> well, bad news. 
I don't have any brown zippers, so that means I need to go get one. Well, 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 look what I got. That was the first time I've been in a craft store in months. months. And it was, it was a little stressful. Um, it's nice to be back, but I did not feel 100% comfortable. So I probably won't be going back. I'll probably keep ordering online for now. But I got my zipper. Ugh. So I've got my basted side seam. You know what? I really I feel like I need to stay stitch this waist. I'm gonna do it because I'm nervous about it stretching out. Should have done that a lot earlier, but. Okay, stay stitch is done. Good, now I can manipulate this a little more and not feel so nervous it's gonna stretch out. All right. I'm trying not to say I'll write so much because when I was editing my last video, I think I said it like 50 times, I swear. So we want the zipper to be like right at the top of the seam. This is so dark, you probably can't really see it very well. Like right up there. So the teeth are going to be just over top of that seam line. And you know what? I'm not going to use a zipper foot because I am feeling spicy. You know what? I am going to baste it. So there's that. Okay. Now, yard work. Great timing. I'm going to sew the other side and I'm going to sew about a quarter of an inch from that seam line. This probably isn't like the legit way to do a lap zipper, but I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, it looks good. Maybe we should uh, go ahead and actually stitch. I'll probably, I'll take out my basting stitches from this main zipper seam line here. Not the ones I just sewed, the one from before. You know what? Why don't I use my seam rubber? Hey, what do you know? <laughs> just carefully. Okay. Let's see. Did that work? It worked. Well, anyway, it's li it's lapped and it zips, so I'm calling it good. I just really want to make sure that this is long enough, this waistband. Right? So now... Right. So now, what we're going to do is sew right here, seam allowance. We're going to sew it all the way around and then when we fold this up, we'll be able to hand stitch on the inside. But before we do that, this side over here has to be finished in a similar fashion. But instead of only finishing the top part and the side, we get, we get to finish the whole thing because it's going to become a little tab that will have a hook. And actually, before I finish this off, I'm going to go around and see how far I need to make the tab go. So I'm just going to kind of measure the waistband along the top of the skirt. Hope to goodness it's long enough. <laughs> And it's not long enough. Uh-oh. If I could just get like a little bit more that much. I'm gonna try to redistribute a bit. I think I can do it. I think that's gonna be fine. So that's done. Now I'm going to actually trim this. And gonna fold this in and this corner here also. It's gonna give us our little tab. Um, it's a little bit shorter than I would like it. It really should be a bit longer, but you know what? We're making do. Okay, you know what? Uh, I don't, I'm not really sure what happened. Maybe it's because I had that twisted there somehow. 
I did end up with a lot more overlap than I originally thought I was going to, so that's great. So I'm actually going to extend this tab a bit. Now I'm going to turn this again. Did we do it successfully? I think we did. We did it, we did it, we did it, we did it. Excellent. So now the key is to just sew around here and not catch the other side of the waistband. Okay, that was pretty good. Now let's just inspect and make sure we don't have any puckers or anything. Oh, we don't! Yes! Yay! I need to grade the seam. Basically, I'm gonna fold down this seam allowance and then fold this down and then hand stitch the inside the waistband. So I have finished the waistband. It's all stitched. Now I just need to let it hang overnight so that the bias will release and I'll be able to trim the hem evenly and it will be done. So I'll see you then. So for the circle skirt leveling, I just kind of eyeballed it really. I padded out my dress form a little bit to more closely emulate my hip shape before I started trimming. And this is more of an art than a science, <laughs> but you just have to kind of eyeball it and see when it looks even and just take a little bit off at a time because you can't add it back on. So as you can see, the strips I'm cutting off are not all one length. They taper because the hem has released at different rates. Check out my Crocs. <laughs> Gotta love those. Anyway, I will speed this up so you can see the whole process. Next, I serged the hem in preparation for a narrow hem. I just rolled up the serged edge once and then twice and then stitched that down. The final step on this skirt was to add the hook and bar. And I just did that by hand stitching in place. Working with this orange fabric and this plaid did make me feel a little bit more fall festive. So if you live in a climate that isn't exactly fall and winter friendly, you can still draw inspiration from the colors of the season. Please let me know if you enjoyed watching this tutorial. Join me on Facebook, Vintage Sewing with Liz. My Instagram is at Liz Von Villas. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Well, well, well. <laughs>